Hello again, Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the Movie Picks Guide to CyberLink Power Director Ultimate. And here we are in part four of our eight-part basic training for CyberLink Power Director. Now we've got our media in our media room here in the upper left-hand corner, and we pre-trimmed or pre-treated some clips, but now it's time to actually resemble the clips on the timeline. Now the timeline is this area down here in the lower half of the interface. You notice that you have number one track, number two track is below it, Although technically number two track is actually above the number one track. In other words, number one is your base video and audio track. As we add clips to track number two, they will actually appear in our video above the tracks that are our number one. So our timeline is inverted. Don't let that confuse you. It'll just become obvious as we work. Now there is an FX track or an FX track where we can add video effects that is above our video one track. We can add video effects directly to the clips we add to our timeline, or we can add them to the video effect track. And then down at the bottom, we have a text track, and this is for adding titles, and a voiceover track. And this is where, if we record narration, this is where the clips will appear for narration. However, those are just designated as text and as voiceover. You can actually put your voiceover on any audio track if you'd like, and you can put your titles on any video track if you'd like. We'll look at titles a little bit later here in the course. Adding video to our timeline is really pretty simple. We just drag it on down to the timeline. Now the timeline does ripple in CyberLink Power Director. That means as you add clips, if I insert a clip into a group of clips, the other clips are going to move off to the right. If I, as I remove clips, the others are going to move to the left to fill in the gap. However, you have to manually select what happens as you add or remove clips, and then the program will ripple based on what your choices are. So I'm just going to take a clip and add it up here to our Video 2 track just to show you something. If I were to select this clip in between these two other clips on my Video 1 track, and I press the Delete button on my keyboard, you notice I get an option pop-up. Remove and leave a gap there, remove and fill gap, or remove fill gap and move all clips. Now if I select remove and fill gap, only the video here that's on Video Track 1 will move to fill in that gap. If I select fill gap and move all clips, you see all video, all audio on all tracks will move left to ripple or to fill in that gap. Likewise, if I were to choose a clip and insert it by placing it between two clips, I get an option screen. I can either overwrite the clip or replace it. I can create a crossfade transition between this clip and the clip that's underneath it. Or I can select the option to insert and move all clips, in which case all the clips on all of the tracks are going to move to the right watch. When I select that, all of the clips ripple off to allow me to insert that clip. You'll see the same thing happen as we trim clips. Trimming means removing a little bit of video from the front or back of a clip. So if I thought this video clip was a little long and I wanted to trim it, you notice when I hover on the edge, I get this little trim indicator. If I click and drag in, I have the option of simply trimming and leaving a gap there, trimming moving all the clips on this track, or trimming and moving all the clips on all tracks and rippling them all in. Now that may seem a little bit clunky because you're always having to make decisions, but there are keyboard shortcuts also. So for instance, if I were to select this clip and delete it by pressing the delete button, you notice I get these pop-ups here. Well, you can see if I select Alt and Delete rather than Delete, Okay, so if I hold down the Alt key and press Delete, I don't have to make that decision. The program will automatically ripple for me. So the keyboard combination can save you having to make a decision or read that option screen. Likewise, for inserting one clip between two clips, you see there's the option to make the entire movie ripple by selecting or holding down the Shift key as you insert the clip. So watch this. Hold down the Shift key, drag that clip in, and the program just knows I wanted to ripple aside. These little rooms on the left that are accessible by these little tabs along the left hand side will give you access to a number of really cool effects and tools. If I click on effects, you see these of course are video effects which I can preview simply by selecting one. These are PIP or picture in picture overlays. They're little graphics, many of them animated that you can place right on top of your video. There's a particle room 
where you see some really cool particles. For instance, you can add rain or snow to a sunny day. In our next session, we're actually going to look at video effects, how to add them, and how to customize them for your particular needs. But there's a lot of really cool stuff in here, including the ability to add subtitles and to add chapters for your DVDs and your Blu-ray discs. Some very cool stuff. And we'll look at a great many of them a little bit later in the course, although we do cover them all in depth in our book, The MoviePix.com Guide to CyberLink Power Director Ultimate. I'm Steve Grizzetti. Hope to see you in part five.